Hi, my name's Sean Little. We're at the beautiful Kingsbury Water Park today, and I'm going to show you how to catch stunning roach like this. Tip number one, barbed hooks. I always like to use these for roach or silverfish fishing where possible, but always check with your fishery that you're on to make sure that you can, you can use barbed hooks. I always go for a, a fine wire, um, wide gape hook, whenever I'm using worm casters or maggots. Tip two, elastic. It's really important when you're fishing for any fish, but especially silvers, that you have your elastic set correctly and the correct strength. Personally, I like to use a lighter elastic so that I can give a slightly harder strike. I can ship back without having to look. And then if I have to strip some elastic out, I have a side puller if I do hook a bigger fish. It's worth getting into a rhythm as well when you're catching silverfish of trying to net as many fish as possible. When in a match situation, every fish can count. So today we're fishing in about five and a half, six foot of water. It's a big open lake and it can tow. Even though it doesn't look like there's much of a ripple on today, the lake can back up and tow at any point. So I've opted to fish a 0.5 Mick Wilkes float, which has a cane tip. And the beauty of the cane tip is I can dot that down perfectly. It'll take plenty of shot, and I know that it's gonna sit at the exact point where I've shotted it to all day. I've then got 012.5 Power Micron mainline to a bulk of number eights, and then I've got two number 12 drop shot spaced around seven inches apart going down to an 09 hook length and a size 18 hook. So I plumbed it up today, there was a bit of a ripple on so I decided to fish it about an inch and a half over depth just in case it was towing. As we've actually progressed through the day the wind has dropped and so has the tow. So now a lot of the fish are more confident and we're finding we're getting a lot more bites. So I've lifted the rig to about an inch off the bottom now and that's how we seem to be catching a lot of the better fish. Tip four, selection of bait and how we bait it up. So to start the session, we put three tangerine sized balls of ground bait in, laced with casters, a few pinkies and a little bit of hemp. This was just to kickstart the swim. Then as the day's gone on, I've, I've gradually built up the swim by put, introducing small little nuggets of ground bait with plenty of chopped worm in them. I've chopped my worm very, very fine, so it's almost a mush. Clean your worm completely off and take as much of the juices out as you can, so you're pretty much putting neat worm into your ground bait. And I'll literally feed one of these, which is sort of a bit smaller than a ping pong ball, after every few fish or whenever I feel like the swim's dying off. I'll then be loose feeding with a catapult probably 10 to 15 casters over the top. I also have some hemp in case they want it on the day. Again, certain days they can feed on hemp rather than caster. Some maggots and pinkies. But the bait of choice today on the hook has been a really, really small bit of worm head. And literally, when I say small part, you're literally nipping off less than a centimetre of the head and just hooking that on. So another key point is your setup and how you have everything set up around you. Now, on venues where I can get into the water, I always like to get in. It frees me up around me so I haven't got any bankside uh, foliage or anything to get my rigs caught into. It also just gives me that extra few yards or meters to get out into the water so I'm not having to fish, you know, extra sections on my pole. What you'll notice is I have a large side tray, when you're in the water, it's really important to have a large side tray so you can get all your bait that you need and all your essentials onto it. 
I have a keep net directly in front of me so that I know exactly where it is every time. So whenever I hook a fish, I'm not having to, you know, worry about where I'm propping my fish. Pole stock again, keeps my pole in the exact same position every time and roll a set up in a, as high as position as I can um, so that it allows me to ship back in one motion. Another important point is how you lay your rigging. So what I've been trying to do when the, when the wind allows is lay it in an S shape so that you, you haven't got to worry about any tangles. It gets down to the bottom really quickly. As soon as I've done that and my rig's settled, I'll tend to pick up my catapult, 10 to 15 casters, and just loose feed over the top. So it gives them, it gives the fish something to home into. And there's one straight away. And what you'll find as well, or we've found today anyway, when you put a little ball of ground bait and a little nugget of ground bait, you'll tend to catch some of the smaller fish before the bigger fish settle over the top. And I think it's, the noise of the casters that are helping bring those bigger fish in and just allowing them to settle over the top of the little nuggets of ground bait we keep putting in. As I was saying earlier, one of the best baits today has been a little bit of worm head. The beauty with fishing a little bit of worm head over a caster um, or a maggot is the fact that you can catch multiple fish on the same piece. I don't have to worry about it being, you know, damaged or um, or them, or them to pulling it off the hook uh, when I'm fishing. See, there you go, straight out again. That's two fish I've had on that little worm head. No damage to it whatsoever. We could comfortably get another four or five fish out of the same piece. Again, lay your rig in, in the S shape, loose feed over the top. And there you go, there's another one on. This is, it seems a better fish. So I was saying about that, the casters and feeding those casters tends to bring these bigger fish in. This one is hanging on. And there you go, there's a perfect example of the stamper roach that you can catch whilst fishing this method. And there you go, there's well over 20 pounds of stunning roach.